In this video, we will demonstrate how easy it is to view and make use of the many diagnostic features of Remote Connect and the Skaterpack X70 model RTU. Remote Connect is a single application for the configuration, logic development, data logging, and diagnostics of the Skaterpack X70 RTU. This helps to reduce the cost and complexity associated with maintaining multiple software applications. Diagnostic functions may be performed locally through any of the communication ports, including USB, Ethernet, and serial, or remotely through serial or TCP networks and modems. Remote Connect allows you to view system information and status from the online diagnostics user interface through object browsers within the software and to make use of diagnostic parameters in the logic editor. Also, diagnostics may be viewed using the command line interface, which can be accessed via Telnet or serially if enabled. The command line interface includes built-in protocol analyzers for the DNP3, Modbus, and IEC 60870-5-104 protocols, as well as other features of the RTU. The easiest way to view diagnostic information about the RTU is to go online. Once online, the Online Diag's SPX70 controller tab appears beside the configuration tab. Four sublevel tabs can now be seen, including status, licensing, logic, and objects. We'll start with the status tab. To update this page, we press the refresh button. This queries the RTU for the latest details. Here we can see the time of the last update. Also here at the top is a button called Reset Diagnostic Status. This might be used after first checking the system status code dialog for any issues. If an issue were seen and then corrected, you might then use this button to clear the status word. There's a great amount of information on the status tab. The Skatapak model and serial number are at the top. The Remote Connect version and RTU firmware version are here. Moving to the right, we can see the lock state. Currently, this RTU is not locked. Pressing the device lock button would remind us of how to lock the RTU. The device status code is below that. Scrolling down, we can see the current time in the device. And if we wanted to do so, we could press this button to set the current time. And sliding back to the left, there is the uh, forcing status. We can see that currently this uh, RTU has three forced objects. Below that is the input power supply voltage, currently 13.7, and we can see there's a low threshold that's been configured at 11.5 volts. Below that, the memory battery is sitting at 3.7 volts. If the RTU were new or had been in storage, the battery switch might be off or in the up position to avoid depleting the battery. In that case, you'd see zero volts and an alert state. Then below that, we see the internal temperature of the RTU. At the bottom, we see an advanced status button. If we press this and scroll down, we can see the current status code followed by the previous five status code values, along with a timestamp for each. This RTU has been rebooted, so these are blank. Over to the right is the task watchdog code and the restarts counter. Below that are the five most recent restart reasons. And below the restart reasons is the time of last configuration snapshot. If an RTU configuration snapshot has been captured, either to internal memory or an SD card, the timestamp would be seen here. You can see the help manual section called Working Online with the Skatapack for more information about this feature. And lastly, on the status page in the lower left, we can see the RTU's MAC address of each Ethernet port, the I.O. board firmware version, and the RTU bootloader version. The next tab is called Licensing. We can refresh this page and we can see, for example, that this RTU has been configured uh, to allow 10 RealFlow flow computer runs. The date this was last updated is also shown here. The next button is called Logic. 
First, as always, we want to refresh this page. Beside this button is another called Restart Application. If it's felt that there may be an issue with the Logic application running in the RTU, this will restart only the Logic application rather than restarting the entire device, as could be done in the Additional Functions menu. The third button allows the user to reset the measured controller scan time. This can be useful if changes have been made to see whether the scan time has been affected. The fourth button, which here is grayed out, is called Write Logic Source. This may be used if an online edit of the Logic application was performed, but then at the prompt to write the Logic Source to the RTU, you chose the option to write later. Recall that changing the logic in the RTU causes the source file to be erased. So pressing Write Logic Source will send the source file to the RTU to be available if it's desired to perform a read from the RTU at some later point. At the top of this section are the project name and version. These may be manually updated by right-clicking on Project in the Logic Editor and then selecting Properties. Below this is when the logic was last started and stopped. The logic save data usage parameter gives an indication of how much memory has been used by the application. And below that is the application signature, which is used to detect if there's been a change to the application. Sliding over to the right, we can see whether the application is running or stopped. As well, there's a status code for the logic application. Below this are several overflow flags. Scrolling down again, we can see an entire section dedicated to displaying the scan times of the MAST, or main logic program, and FAST, also logic if used. Also, the configured scan period for any auxiliary logic sections is shown. For both MAST and FAST, the current or most recent scan time is shown, along with the maximum and minimum. Note that in the Telepace Ladder Logic programming environment, calculation of the most recent scan time would have required the addition of a network full of additional logic and 60 seconds to generate the result. The last tab is for viewing or modifying the contents of objects. The Skatapak I.O. browser is where we can view the current value of all default objects. If we click the Refresh button, and if any custom browsers had been created, we would see them here. As a useful diagnostic tool, objects can be added as needed while online. These may be added directly at the top level or with any browser that's been created. These ad hoc objects will work like any others, but when the project is closed, they will not be saved. To keep any new object in a browser, it must be added to the configuration objects area. The Forced Objects browser allows you to see a complete list of all currently forced objects, regardless of which browser they might be in, and their current state if we press the Refresh button. If you enable Forcing mode, you can then clear forcing for all forced values, perhaps if you're done testing for the day, or just a selected forced value. The X70 model SCADA packs include many diagnostic objects that simply don't exist in previous programming tools or which would have required addition of multiple diagnostic modules. Though the various diagnostic tabs provide a lot of information, it's easy to see much more. I want to create a new browser, so I'll go back to the Configuration tab and add a new browser. I'll call it Diagnostics. After selecting this new browser, I'll click Add Entry, and then Add System Data Group. Now we're presented with a list of many groups of diagnostic and status objects, which could be added. For example, adding the SysLogic group, we'll apply that, and then while going to Online Diagnostics, select that entry and we'll refresh it and this shows objects providing information about the logic application. If it's desired to use any of these items in the logic editor, you'll add them individually as objects. Now I'd like to create a new digital object to track whether the logic is running. To do this, I'll go back to the configuration tab and select object configuration. I'm going to click add object and type the name 
logic running. The type is going to be a Boolean. Now I'm going to go down to the lower left here and select a source type of system data. The system data reference group is going to be called sys underscore logic. And then I'm going to add a reference name of running. And then I'll click OK and apply that. We'll write this to the RTU. Now we go back to online diags, select the diagnostics tab and refresh. Here's the parameter, syslogic running, and it's currently a value of 1, which means the logic is indeed running. But how did I know to use running as the parameter in this case? Well, we can find the system data items by going to the documentation, of course. Go to Help, Expand. We'll open the Technical Reference Manuals, Skater Pack Operations, Technical Reference, System Data, and then there's Syslogic. We can see the very first item listed is Syslogic Running. It's a digital type or an SPX70 Boolean, and we can see the comment. It's important to set the specified data type when creating the object. When this change is written to the RTU, we could then make use of the object parameter called syslogicrunning.value. The skater pack also includes a command line interface. If we go to Ethernet services and select Telnet server, we can write this to the RTU to enable the Telnet server. This could also be done through a serial port that's configured for command line mode. Using a terminal application such as PuTTY, we enter the IP address of the port we're connected to and port 23. After pressing the open button, a text communication session with the RTU starts. Entering either help or a question mark provides a list of all available commands. This command line interface includes diagnostic features for the DNP3, Modbus, and IEC 104 protocols, as well as TCP IP, HART, and CAN bus. It also includes diagnostic analyzers for the RealFlow flow computers and the Edge Linux-based processor, if that's included with the RTU. Diagnostic information may be displayed in the text interface or written to a file. That file may then be downloaded using FTP and may be shared with our technical support team or others. For example, here we can perform some system diagnostic testing. I'll type sysdiag, and when I press enter, this gives guidance on how to use this tool. We need to enter sysdiag, then the mode, which is enable, and then a filter. In this case, I'll display all diagnostics by typing star. So the complete command is sysdiag enable star. We then type diag to enter the diagnostic display mode. After waiting a few moments, we can see diagnostic messages appear. To disconnect from the diagnostics terminal, we press the escape key. As mentioned, it's possible to capture diagnostic messages in a file instead of displaying it in the terminal. After enabling a diagnostic tool, instead of typing diag to begin, we'll instead type file diag. A message appears stating that file logging has commenced, which also gives the location and name of the file. After some time, we can disable logging to file by typing file diag zero. After typing dir and hitting enter to see contents of the directory, we can see the file called device-diag.log was just saved. And we can see its current size. Quite often, this sort of diagnostic testing would be performed remotely, so the file would now be transferred using an FTP tool such as FileZilla. To enable FTP transfers, we'll need to go back to the Ethernet port services and enable the FTP server functionality. I'll apply that and write it to the RTU. Here in FileZilla, we enter the RTU's IP address and the FTP port number, which typically is 21, and then click Quick Connect. 
the RTU file structure now appears. We can right click on devicediag.log and click download to retrieve the file. Going to the computer's downloads folder, we can see this file and open it to view the contents. When done with command line diagnostics, remember to disable any diagnostic tool you might have enabled. Some of these tools can consume a significant amount of processor time. In our case, we had enabled system diagnostics, so I'll type sysdiag disable star. To learn more about the SCADA pack, access the user documentation on the Schneider Electric Exchange shop and the Schneider Electric website. Also, see our videos on YouTube.